If they do that, they're going to be, the two will be very, 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 very tough to beat. Off the window, no. Roberts tries to get it. Shake for the win. Got it. This was 14 points, but he just looked, the way that he dominated the game was in controlling the pace and making smart decision after decision. Call the five slamma down. Go to beat the spot before or after. The dream is alive for Houston. Go Cougs. Let's go. Welcome in, welcome in to uh, another episode of Let's Rage Cooks presented by the Saxonian family. The uh, first original Houston postgame show after each and every single men's basketball and football show. And the Houston Cougars absolutely dominated in every way, shape, or form in this game. I guess technically they may, they might have had a handful of seconds when when Longwood made their run in the first half and cut it 14-9, to but... After that point, it was completely one-sided. The Cougars, not only that they look like a one seed, but quite frankly, they, they dominated. They flexed their muscles. They showed why they were number one in the country for all those weeks. Final score, Houston comes out victorious, 86-46 to over Longwood. Jamal Shedd had 11 points, 9 assists. LJ Cryer was tied with Damian Dunn as the leading scorers for Houston with 17 points a piece, and we saw the return of Ramon Walker, who played in his first game since February 19th after suffering that a knee injury, the meniscus injury that could have potentially sidelined him for the season. He ended up making his return, and he made his impact felt, but we'll get into the game. Joining me, as always, Deon Dunlap and Chris Gardner with the Houston Rombar Review. How are y'all doing? Doing great, fellas. How y'all doing? Great, I'm going great as well. Let's I'm looking get... forward to a uh, second round, man. I'm looking forward to <laughs> Wade Taylor again. See if he can light up Jamal shit one more time. I doubt it though, but we'll see. It's gonna be a fun matchup. Yeah, let's get into it. It's gonna be a rematch of that Toyota Center matchup that they did in December, when which the Aggies and Cougars played. Uh, unfortunately for the Cougars, that was also the last game that Terrence Arsenal played for Houston. But we'll get in. A lot of that matchup a little later on in the show, but let's talk about this game in particular. The first round, Houston again flexes muscles, completely dominated Longwood defensively. They were dialed in again. It was 14 and 9 at one point. Houston ended the half on a 27, a 29 to 7 run, and they were up 43 to 16 at halftime. They ended up winning by 40 points. Ryan Elvin, I think it might be a record for how uh, early he checked into the game with still over six minutes left to play. Everyone got in. They all, everyone with the exception of Cedric Lott that played, scored. Uh, looking at minutes, Jamal Shedd only played 25 minutes. Javier Francis played 24. Jawan Roberts, who seemed like he might have gotten banged up again, but he only played 19 minutes. No one played over 30 minutes. I mean, this couldn't have gone more perfect for Houston. Uh, agreed. And you see the difference or how much, just in minutes, that Ramon Walker's presence in return adds to the team. They went nine deep in the first half. And he did what he does. He crashes around, got offensive rebound and all those great things. But that extra body spreads out the minutes. And it's that's another plus, another tool in the shed for Coach Sampson. We didn't, you know, Longwood would, wouldn't have needed a miracle performance, shooting well and all those kind of things to have a chance to win this game. And they didn't get that, obviously. Coos won by 40. Good to see Damian Dunn not hesitate, knock down shots. It's a, a well balanced win by the one seed over a 16 seed. Yeah, and um, just to kind of add to what Chris just said, with Ramon's return, I think it also puts everyone in their natural positions in regards to matchups on the floor. And I think they all look comfortable, and um, they played off the energy that Ramon brought um, when he entered the game, and they were able to sustain that whenever after that push from Longwood. And it was just impressive from top to bottom, from defense to – a ball movement, shot making. I think um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this next matchup as well. 
on the topic of Ramon Walker. And let's, 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 you know, before we can talk about Ramon more, let's, I mean, the opponent wasn't great, but we're seeing more and more Big Said a lot getting more comfortable in his role on the court. Did not get in foul trouble, blocked some shots, didn't make free throws, but I mean, you know, I don't expect him to do that. But defensively, he was in the right spots more and more. So I think that's more of a positive. And with said being productive and not a negative, Ramon's return could be at that four spot. You don't have to worry about, you know, the five spot now was Javier and Sid. That's good. You don't have to, you know, worry about too many minutes for Juwan Roberts at that five spot if that Shingatuzin is more problematic for another game. Yeah, like I was going to say, he made his impact felt almost instantaneously that Effie on YouTube brought up. He skied. He looked like he came out of nowhere. He flew in for that first rebound, drew contact, got a foul, hit a free throw. And like you said, Chris, brought the energy. I think it was you that tweeted it out after he got fouled. He shouted, and you could just see he was just energized just to be back on the floor, and the entire team rallied around him being on the court. And Again, the impact that's not necessarily seen on the stat sheet where he is going to allow a lot more of these players to get much needed rest. And it gives Houston flexibility, which they just have not had over the course of the past four weeks that he's been out, along with a Jojo Togler they follow not soon thereafter. And salute to Fran Fischilla, because he ans- he hinted at a possible Ramon return last week during the Big 12 tournament. And then I spoke to Ramon on Sunday. And he said he's getting close. He said, he said Sunday he was 80 to 85 percent. And the key, and we'll find out Saturday. He said to me, the key is how my knee responds after practice. So now he's played a game. We'll see how it responds after the game. If it doesn't have any flare-ups tomorrow, then he'll be good to go on Sunday against the Aggies. And of course, they'll need him for his activity, his hustle, heart, effort, energy, all those things, and just the body to be active defensively against those Aggies. Dan, was there anyone's performance outside of Ramon Walker that stood out to you? There's so many candidates. We just talked about Damian Dunn, Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp. I think the biggest, uh, not even the biggest motivating thing that you want from a Houston perspective is that you got to see a lot of those guys knock down shots, which uh, for a couple guys like Emmanuel Sharp, they had struggled. Even LJ Cryer had struggled shooting the ball, and hopefully this is a game where they can catch rhythm at the right time and prepare propel them into a deep ncaa tournament run yeah you know when you say you say shot making lj stuck out to me i think his um his focus it it seemed he seemed supremely focused and he was in a good rhythm like you just mentioned and he was knocking down shots i think um with him knocking down shots it him it adds to what jamal's able to do with attacking the paint and attacking the rim and getting outside with um, the thread of him and Emmanuel. So both of them, seeing them knock down shots, get shots to fall. But primarily LJ, I think his experience and his determination to be a factor on a team that wins a national championship is driving him and motivating him even more to add to his collegiate resume that he has already. Quick, before we get into a huge shout out to Houston Cougars, Germany, who's become a regular on all, a lot of these post game shows. He's think big shout out, said great job, guys. Thank you. Go Cougs and left the super sticker. So thank you to you, Houston Cougars, Germany, for supporting the show. And I'm just going to how, how do I say it? We encourage others to do the same thing. If you have you have the means to do a super chat, super sticker, please do so and contribute and to help the Less Rage Cougs. You see, we, we got what additional sponsor for this show, the post game see the tournament, the NCAA tournament is here. So if you want to help us continue doing this and and ultimately doing more with more, because we've done a, a lot with less than some other folks. So that's all we're asking for to keep us going forward. Onward and upward. That's what I like to say. Yeah, saying onward and upward, just like the Cougars did in this game in particular. But 
Jamal Shedd, great bounce back from the Big 12 performance, Big 12 championship game performance. 11 points, didn't necessarily need to score much, but he was efficient. 5 of 8 from the field, only took 3 pointers, made 1 of them, but 9 assists. He was really finding his open teammates, and like you mentioned, Dan, when it came to the rhythm of LJ Cryer, Jamal Shedd was, did a phenomenal job of setting up all his teammates, Cryer included, Emmanuel Sharp. They benefited tremendously from Jamal Shedd's ability to be a floor general in this game. And salute to Coach Sampson. We do that a lot on these LRC shows. But to drop a play for Emmanuel, first part of second first half. Part, second half. Second mm-hmm. half, you know, Emmanuel did not shoot, make a shot in the first half. And Coach drew it up for E. He not got that three. To help him, you know, kind of shake out of uh, – he man doesn't lack confidence, but to see the ball go in right off the you know the bat in the start of the second half, that's good as well. So good job for you know for Emmanuel and Coach Sampson and the players to dominate a team that they should have dominated. They did. Yeah, but to your point of uh, Jamal Andy, uh, his assertiveness and his the way he attacked them to get down floor. In the way he was finishing, but I think they're complimented with the way that LJ is making shots. It really is a sight for me to see. I think um, he looks supremely focused as well, especially on the defensive end. I think he, he got Houston sparked with his intensity, the way he was on their front line and attacking and pressuring the basketball. And then just the way he playmates. I mean, to see his comfort level, the, his basketball IQ, the way he's able to control the pace of the game and set his teammates up. I think that's really what makes him a, a special point guard. Not only his ability to take and make the big shots, but what he does to to create, <clears throat> excuse me, to create for others. Um, and he, he did that well today. I, I think he's looking forward to the next game. And so am I. He's looking forward to the challenge. You know, against Wade Taylor the fourth. Wade went off in, in December, even though – Jamal blocked, I think, two of his shots. And Wade still hit some deep threes, some tough contested threes. But from both perspectives, Aggie perspective, fan perspective, and Kook fan perspective, Nebraska's defense is nowhere near. No, not even close. I They can't even spell defense compared to Houston defense. <laughs> but Longwood is nowhere as explosive as Texas A&M offensively. So it's going to be, should be a great matchup. The committee tries to avoid uh, early, you know, second round matchups from the season. But when you had eight teams make it from the SEC and eight teams make it from the Big 12, it's kind of hard to do that, kind of hard to avoid it. And of course, the teams had to win too. Aggies had to beat Nebraska and they did that. So we got to read. A rematch from December. The Cougs won by four in December. I don't care if they win by three on Sunday. I don't care if they win by one on Sunday. Whatever. As long as Houston wins and advances to Dallas, that's the bottom line. It was funny how when Longwood made their their walk, wasn't really a run, they scored with five in a row. It was 14-9. <laughs> the announcer said, you know, the Cougs go through these spells. They go through these droughts, you know, offensively. Then bam, <laughs> that was, Damian Dunn said, yep, yeah, no, I got to go on today. And Andy, you said, what was it? Finished with a 29? 29 to 7. That's seven. how they outscored Longwood 10 the first half. So, yeah, you know, it's it just, hey, whatever. Crawl. If y'all take that crawl, walk. It wasn't a run. So, but different opponent, clearly. Aggies are better than Longwood. But you can see when Emmanuel Sharp, when Damian Dunn has his shot falling, it just adds another level of potency to Houston's offense. If he wants to go with a cross, so we'll go with a cross, Chris. And we'll talk more about Texas A&M on the other side of this break. But real quickly, I'd like to welcome in everybody the second time out of their Friday night to join us here on Let's Rage Cooks, presented by the Saxonian family. A big thank you to Steve Saxonian for being the primary sponsor of the original Houston Cougars postgame show for each and every single football and men's basketball Game, Steve Saxony has been a primary sponsor from day one when the men's basketball season tipped off in November to 
every single game, however far the NCAA tournament runs for the Houston Cougars, which could potentially culminate on April 8th on that championship Monday. Of course, we also like to say thank you to our other sponsors for today's episode on Let's Rage Cougs, including Star Pizza. With three locations across the Houston area, Star Pizza is your go-to stop before or after the game. With a game like this, obviously 11, it's never too late for pizza, but most definitely after a victory Friday, you could stop in on Saturday to get some pizza on any of their various locations. And we also like to say thank you to BB's for being a sponsor on today's episode of Let's Rage Cougs, and they will be a sponsor for the entire Houston Cougars NCAA tournament run. BB's Tex Orleans has 14 locations to serve you. Build your boil with us today. And again, a big thank you to BB's for being a sponsor on today's episode. And last but not least, we'd also like to say thank you to UH Cougar alum Vincent Harding, who's a real estate broker, and he is the sponsor of the ticker that you see scrolling on the bottom on any of the uh, YouTube or video platforms if you're watching us on Twitter.com for or X.com, formerly known as Twitter. And you can contact him if you're interested in any of his real estate services at 832-758-2712. Once again, that's 832-758-2712. With that being said, let's get back into this game and the matchup and <laughs> it fees brings up a great point when it comes to celebrity brackets up next texas a&m when we've talked about how they played in december that was a very very intriguing game in that houston for the most part was in control for that game they led by over 20 points i think their largest lead was 21, 21. and then in the latter portions of that second half way taylor caught fire and really was the only player for Texas A&M that had, had an offensively good game, but it was really lopsided when you look at the scores. Way Taylor, 34 points, and then the second leading score for Texas A&M, well, they were tied, it was Jace Carter and Hayden Hefner, who had seven points each. So Houston was in control until Way Taylor caught fire, and then that made things a little bit interesting. It'll be intriguing to see how that second round matchup goes. I saw the comment earlier on the screen where I believe it was F.E. He says that a and looked like Miami with that guard play. I think this is one of the situations where Houston will benefit tremendously from seeing having played Texas A&M already once. And that explosiveness that Wade Taylor showed against the Cougars themselves back in December at the Toyota Center. It will help. In that game in December, Mr. Obaseki was 0 for 5 in nine minutes for the Aggies. He started with the last five or six games for the Aggies, and they played much better and played faster and offense is rolling and all those things. So he's got much more confidence than he did back in December. But the Aggies have m- multiple guards who could give Houston problems. That's one thing that Dayon and I and Andy have said is a potential concern for matchups. Aggies, I do not see them shooting 54% or whatever they did against Nebraska today. I don't see them scoring 98 points like they did against Nebraska today. But also, a key about December, Jamal said it immediately after the game to John Rothstein this evening. He remembers what Wade Taylor did in December. Jamal's going to accept that challenge and see if Wade can go off with 34 points like he did again. I doubt it. Should be a hell of a matchup, though. I'm looking forward to it. But again, I don't know what Stephen A. said. He picked Aggies to beat the Cougs in an upset second round. He has them going all the way to the Final Four. I'm okay, surprised well, he was that high took Sandy. He'll be wrong come Sunday, and that'll be into that. So no, no worries. Now, this Texas Tech team is a different team than this team that we face. Over Seki, uh, since he's been starting the what six and one in the last games, and I watched the game today, and he looked like an NBA player out there. His aggressiveness, his shot making ability, the way he creates, he's a big body. And I think with, with their three guards, with Ramford, Taylor, and himself, the, the way that they all complement each other, they all had over twenty plus points today. I don't think that'll happen against Houston, but I think he's a, a real threat, and he has a real potency to what Taylor brings. So I think this is a a different team than what we face, but I still like our matchups. I like the, the, um, I I like our guards a little better, but it's going to be a battle of the guards, which group of guards, trio of guards, 
can play better. Will it be Houston's led by Jamal Shedd? It will be the Aggies led by Taylor. But then you got the wild cards. I think that's where Houston comes off the bench with Damian Dunn, um, showed what he could do today in his first March Madness game. Uh, he, he was excited, he, and he came through. Can he come through in the next game? I think that would be important. But I, I like the matchup. This Texas and them team is – it's really good in regards to how they attack like we do. But I think one of the, the huge things in, to watch in this game, I think when I, I know they are the number one um, offensive rebounding team, mm -hmm. but they're not top in the country when it comes to second chance points. So oftentimes when they get those offensive rebounds, they kick it out and look for three. So it, get, it will give Houston an opportunity to reset their defense if they are to get beat up on the – um, offensive glass because you're going up until it's a really good team and Houston lost the players that they lost who were really good rebounders. And so, but um, to counter that, Houston is a tremendous defensive team that creates a lot of turnovers. They did that today and Texas A&M oftentimes get loose with the basketball and have turnover issues. And so if Houston can get turnovers and get out and transition, get points off of those turnovers, I think that it can be a key opponent to Houston beating Texas A&M, but they're a different team. I think they're they're more confident with their three guards that they line up that they've been playing with, and it's been successful for them. But I like the matchup, and, and I like Houston's defense to be the um, the edge to kind of get them over the top. Great points, brother. Great points. The offensive rebound, the Aggies are tops in it, but they do have turnover issues sometimes against aggressive defense well that's houston <laughs> houston i think another key will be how the game is called how tightly the game is called if it's allowed to be physical and javier francis doesn't get an early foul trouble or foul trouble at all and then when big said comes in and does get an early foul trouble that just adds to houston's versatility defensively it gets to a point one thing about you know folks talking about aggies look like miami Keep in mind, Marcus Sass was not 100% last year. And he's with Jamal Shit. And he's with Jess Walker. You know, those three guys were playing against, they just fought through. But they were not healthy. Jamal Shit is as healthy as he's been, especially compared to last season. The major issue now for the Cougs is Juan Roberts' health. Ramon Walker is healthy, as healthy as he can be right now, of course. But these Cougs have nine, they're nine deep again. That's a help. That's a bonus. Yeah, Crafty 77 says Nebraska was 37th best defense on Kempom. Jamal said Wade Taylor was the best point guard he's played this season. Both teams are better than the first time they played in December. Going to be good. And I think we, if we see what uh, history has shown us this season, Jamal shed the second time he plays – T top opponents when you think of the second time that Houston played Iowa State, the second time they played Kansas. Jamal Shedd has stepped up to the plate each and every single time, so I think he's going to do it once again come Sunday, whenever the time gets announced. I don't think it's been officially made as of yet. Maybe it, it will over the course of this show, but it is definitely going to be an intriguing matchup, and I think that is going to favor the Cougars how dominant defensively, especially, again, consistency, going back to the point that we've made multiple times to end the regular season and in through the Big 12 tournament, That, but, like, the bread and butter for Houston, defensively forcing opponents to turn the ball over like they did today against Longwood, who forced 18 turnovers against Longwood, which turned into 25 points for Houston off those turnovers. Re re uh, battle on the rebounds is certainly going to be a big thing for both teams come Sunday between Texas A&M and Houston, but I, I truly think that having them play the second time is going to favor into the Cougars much more rather than the Aggies um, just because of what we've seen with the teams that Houston has played twice this season. It like I, I agree with Dayon. It's a different Aggies team than they played in December, especially with Obaseki back. Well, more confident and, and starting, and he's got his offense flowing. Aggies uh, in December, Wade Taylor took 14 of the team's 27 threes. He took 14 himself. Okay. He made six of them. I think all six were in the second half <laughs> during his heat check of a half that helped them come back when the Cougs were up 21. 
Emmanuel Sharp had a very good game. I think it's going to be a close game. It won't be, I think it'll be a game that Kuz can win, what, 75, 70, 75, 68, something like that. It may be a white knuckle game as long as the Cougs win. I don't see the, I don't see that being a blowout either way. Because another thing, that the Cougs have a day off. The Big 12 tournament, they played three games in a row. Three games, three days. And they were so banged up. Coach Sampson said after the first two games, he wanted to come home. Because against Iowa State, they were just running on fumes in front of all those Iowa State fans in Hilton South. It might be a lot more Aggies in Memphis on Sunday than Cougars, but it won't be 17,000 Aggies. And I think that's going to be a factor as well. Let me enough red in there to, to motivate the Cougs and the players to get this dub. Yeah, I agree with you, Andy. I, um, I think this second to Houston facing the Texas a and for the second time will be to their benefit. I think the tendencies um, that – particularly Wayne Taylor has and how he and when he takes some of his shots, Houston be able to study it and break it down and come up with a plan to now allow him to get some of his deep transition or pick and roll when he comes in the pick and, and quickly being able to get off his shot. Because thinking back to that game, some of those threes came off of screen to get Jamal off of him and the defense not reacting quick enough and he being deep enough to get his shot off before the defense reacts. So, um, I, I think Coach Sampson and staff will be able to come up with a strategic plan to make it tough for him. I don't think you stop a player as good as um, Taylor is. You make it tough for him, and if he is to make some hell of a shots like he does and like he's capable of doing, then so be it. But I think you're not allowing him to get some of the rhythm shots that allow him to get in such a really, really hot rhythm really quickly. And oftentimes in their good games, he gets off to a good start at the beginning of the game, and he has that rhythm throughout the, the full game. And so I think it's be key for Houston to not allow him to get off to a good start and make him try to shoot his way into having a good game like they did the first go around in which he, he had to take the shots that he had had to take to help his team get back in the game. And so I think Houston, to play with a lead or have the game make go, I think it just, it just be good for them to not allow him to get off to a good start. But I think just playing them a second time and having that familiarity with um, how they play and how they look to get certain shots and the tendencies will benefit Houston. And, and one key, there were times in a game in December where the high screens – Taylor did it to get Jamal off of him. And sometimes the Cougs, it just switched it and it didn't work. And it came a point, Jamal basically said to coach, we're not switching. I got him. It's going to be me and him. So I don't think there'll be as, as many switches in the first half, you know, early on to give Wade Taylor a chance to get, get it going early. He got it going early in the second half, and by that point, it was too late. He was already hot, and it, it didn't matter what Jamal did, you know. So I think the defensive tweaks will be there. The Aggies, you know, Coach Buzz has so much respect for Coach Sampson, and I think he, he was so long-winded in his post game in December about his admiration for Coach Sampson and everything he's done. Almost sounded kind of stalkerish, he said. There's nothing I don't know about the family, you know, Kelly and Lauren and, and everything. I was like, okay, coach, whatever. But it should be a good one. Second round game. Cougs will find a way to win. That's all I care about. Just find a way to win. Yeah, to Chris's point, I think Houston and Coach Sampson will throw multiple defenses at, at Taylor. I think um, they've shown throughout this year where they have different pick and roll coverages that they go to whether it be to switch and whether it be to trap or blitz or just different things that they like to do on the perimeter. I think they'll give him and Obaseki and Ram for all of their guards different looks um, throughout the game to kind of just not allow them to play in a rhythm and kind of be expected to know what they're going to face on any given possession. And, you know, Aggies might uh, try to go to LJ Cryer more and not go whoever Jamal is guarding or whoever Emmanuel Sharp's guarding. They may 
I think LJ is the weak link. And it'll be up to LJ to, to not be the weak link and man up on his guy, whoever that may be. I look forward to it. It's it's good head-to-head challenges at a lot of positions. It should be a, a good matchup. I hope it lives up to the expectation that we're placing on it. And whenever they announce the game time for it, tune in. And then after the game, we'll discuss it. And we'll hopefully discuss another Coug victory as Houston advances to, to uh, Dallas. I mean, speaking of matchups, I think, um, of course, Jamal's going to match up with Taylor. I think with the size of Oseki, I think Emmanuel probably draws that assignment. And I think uh, LJ probably guards Rad- Ramford, Radford because he's a, just in regards to his size, I think mm-hmm. he'd be able to match up well because um, Oseki shows the ability in this um especially in the game today, that he can play inside out, especially with his size. And I think he, he with his height and his length, he'd be able to shoot over LJ. So I expect Radford to be able to – I expect um, LJ to match up with Radford and Emmanuel to draw the challenge in Obaseki. And it's going to be a key matchup because Obaseki, he nice. <laughs> I've seen him. He's nice. When Wade Taylor went to the bench, they played exclusively through him. And he yep. made play after play after play, whether it was going to the rack, Mid range three, however you want it, he gave it to him. He nice. All those questions will be answered on Sunday, real quickly. Um, I'm trying to get audio, some audio of the post game uh, press conference. Oh, well, why have audio when we could have a video? But first and foremost. Uh, we'd like to say once again, thank you for each and every single one of you guys that have taken the time out of your Friday night here, Central Time Zone. Um, depending on whenever, wherever you're watching us from, Michael Jones is joining the show from Memphis, Tennessee. He says he's here. He was at the FedEx Forum. He said there are not a lot of Aggie fans there. So it'll be interesting to see what the turnout is on Sunday if more both Houston might, and, might be on and Sunday, A&M though. fans trickle in. Uh, over the course of the weekend. But again, this is Let's Rage Cougs, the original Houston postgame show for each and every single football and men's basketball game. Of course, we'd like to say thank you to Steve Saxony for being the primary sponsor of not only today's episode, but he has been all season long for all the men's basketball postgame shows. Of course, we also like to say thank you to Star Pizza, who, along with Steve Saxony, has been a sponsor from uh, really going back to the football season all season long with three locations across the Houston area. Star Pizza is your go-to stop before or after the game for some delicious pizza. And, of course, we also like to say thank you to BB's for being a sponsor throughout this entire NCAA tournament run. BB's Texas Ordinance has 14 locations to serve you. Build your boil with us today and stop at any one of the locations to support. Again, these are all Local businesses in the Houston area that are not only supporting us here on Let's Rage Cougs, but support the local economy. Be sure to stop by any of their locations. Of course, we also like to say thank you to UH Cougar alum Vincent Harding for being the sponsor of today's ticker that you see scrolling at the bottom of the screen on the video platforms. He is a real estate broker, and you can contact him if you're interested in his services at 832-758-2712. Once again, that's 832 758 2712 12 before uh, we pull up uh the post game for video from uh fe that's a great point he likes monique wilson on obaseki yeah. what do you guys think of and we'll get we'll get back into the matchup in a in a bit but what do you guys think overall how the ncaa tournament has gone so far through the first round um we can talk conference um how the big 12 is done uh, the sec has really struggled um, but Texas A and M was going to be representing the SEC. That conference That's struggle. The ACC win, has win number done two. Really that was win number two for the SEC with the Aggies win. Did they get the third one? Who was the other team that is playing? Tennessee. No, no, it was, it was, they had eight as well. I think like the, like the Big Twelve. So um, two and five. So somebody I'm missing. Alabama. Alabama. That's it. That's it. That's three and five. Then. So yeah, and Alabama. And, yeah, and TCU lost to Utah State. So Big Twelve is five and three in their first round games. So five chances to get to the Sweet 16 starting tomorrow and get those units for the conference. Uh, the ACC outside of Virginia doing quite well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the South region, 
has been the upset region, the, but the other part of it, we'll see who gets to Dallas. But it's the great, as Andy has said, it's the beauty and the curse of March Madness, the madness of March. That's why I like it the way it is. You give teams a chance to compete and get it done on the court. BYU, no, I don't say I, mm, a little bit disappointed in BYU and, and Texas Tech, but BYU yes. started too late. You know, they got got hot too late, and Jackson Robinson didn't have enough help. But, you know, hey, Big 12 is still five and three, better than the SEC, so that's good. And you just got to take your battles where you can and look forward to uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I love it, man. I love the parody in the tournament. I love for any given game, uh, anyone can be challenged and be beat. And so I like the outcome. Of, I, mean, I love the outcomes that, that we've been seeing. The oh, wait, 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 Dayan, what are you saying? Greg Sankey's wrong? What are you saying? You don't want to see the, the, the mid majors and, and the, <sighs> the lower tier programs get a shot at it? Is that what you're saying, Dayan? No. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. I like it because it, as, as, as they're proving you know, on a game to game basis, if they earn it, some of these teams have won their championship tournaments and therefore they're on the run. They're playing good. And so I'm open for it. I mean, if you earn a chance to be in the tournament, and you, we've seen it throughout the years on any given game basis, yeah, a Cinderella, quote unquote, Cinderella can make a run. And so the more the better. You got to win in advance. And yeah. these bigger conferences have the conference cloud over them. But at the end of the day, that doesn't win a game for you. You know, NC State, it won, it won at least six in a row because it won five <laughs> in a row last week to win the ACC mm -hmm. Conference Championship, and they won their first round game. So, I mean, it's just Miss Wanda chiming in. She was at the game in Memphis. Thank you for, for, for chiming in. I enjoy I I like the way it is. Mike told me to. You know, I, I don't want to see just because you're a team in a power conference and you are have a 500 record. So that's you, ridiculous. Yeah, no, I don't. I'm not all for that. I'm sorry. Mike's comment too. He says James Madison look good. That would be an interesting battle with them between Duke and yeah, Maybe James Wisconsin Madison. Yeah. the Big Ten. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they look like the flat out better team the whole. Contest. Yeah, um, they led like almost the whole game against Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah. Texas Grand Canyon Tech. from the WAC is uh put into St. Mary's right now. Nine minutes ago in the mm. second half, about thirteen. Texas Tech when they played NC State, I, 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 if they were looking at all the Big Twelve schools, I think their performance. BYU was up there. BYU ruined my bracket. I thought BYU was gonna win, and that got off my bracket off to a bad start. But I think Texas Tech. Really, the they just they didn't really seem competitive against NC State. Like they had no answer, uh, in my opinion, for the Wolfpack. And I think that was the the more intriguing thing, considering what they had done, especially towards the, the end of the regular season in the Big Twelve Conference play. And I expected them to to perform or at least go out with a little bit more of a bang, and which I, I found disappointing when it came to Texas Tech's performance. Yeah, see me, I'm the opposite, Andy. I think real seeing how NC State was playing so well and had so much confidence, I wasn't surprised as a result. As like you said, I agree, as Texas Tech really wasn't competitive in that game, but I gave that more to the credit of NC State and how way how well they've been playing versus BYU. I was surprised on that one. I was expecting them to win and just to see how they, I mean, eventually they kind of fought back, but it, it, I was surprised more with that win. I think that kind of goes to our previous um, topic before about the parity of, of, of the tournament. But um, I, I love it, though, man. I, I love it. Yeah, you know, Texas Tech, they kind of succumbed to the injuries. They were banged up last weekend, you know, key player with ankle injuries, and they just seemed kind of too – They couldn't fight through it and they just didn't look like themselves. I mean, like the Cougs kind of took it out of them last weekend and then NC state is rolling. They're just like comp supreme confidence 
where it's Tech don't, like Tech don't have a lead guard either. You know, they don't have like a lead yeah. dog, a lead guard. So it's just one of those. It comes down to matchups as well. <laughs> you know, that's part of the tournament. And that's the fun of the tournament. It's matchups. It's one game, this team against team X against team Y. It's all about matchups. You know, we can all project about certain things because at what point, what was it on Sunday? I heard from friends and folks, and I think even in our group chat, boy, the, uh, the Cougs bracket looks tough. It looks like the toughest bracket. Mm. Kentucky is going to be really scary, man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Mm. All the other kind of ah, things. Oh, yeah. Surprising, too. Okay. So, yeah. All right. It's all about matching. Marquette, man. For, for a good portion of the game, was struggling a little bit against Western Kentucky before they pulled away late. Which was interesting, too. As long as Tyler Kolick is healthy enough to play, they'll be a tough out. Well, he had a double-double, we'll I think, today with 11 assists. He is a hell of a guard. <laughs> and Duke was able to figure his stuff out, too, in their game uh, as they closed out. Kind of similar situation. They were in a yeah, – well, it was a little bit more against Vermont. They had much more – Control, but Vermont kind of made a, a, a late run, and Duke was able to answer and, and put the game away. So, yeah, like you said, I think the South has definitely been a little bit uh, more interesting. When Marquette was in a battle with Western Kentucky, I was thinking of 2021 when Houston, in the Midwest region, a lot of their top seeds were falling off, but Marquette found a way to win and, and closed out strong. On that topic, let's hear with Kelvin Sampson. And some of the players had to say following their dominating first round victory in the NCAA tournament. Coach Sampson joined by a couple of seniors in Jamal Shedd, who had 11, point, 11 points, nine assists tonight, and LJ Cryer with a game high 17. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then take questions for the student athletes. Coach? Yeah, I, I thought the uh, most important thing for us um, uh, after the uh, Big 12 tournament was rest. We just needed to rest, you know, because of all the injuries we've had, we just kind of, we're just not made for three games in three days. That was tough for, that was tough for our group. But I was proud of them, you know, uh, winning two games um, in that tournament is not easy. Um, but we got to practice. The problem with playing, condensing your schedule where you're playing game, 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 that means that you're, probably having slippage in some area. So it, it felt great um, uh, for me that I was able to just work on us. Um, Monday, normally I would give them Tuesday off, but I didn't want, to, I'm sorry, Monday off, but I didn't. We came in Monday, worked on our defense, worked on our defense on Tuesday. Um, and we started working on Longwood on uh, Wednesday. So we just, we needed to, we just needed to tighten some things up, you know. Um, I could see it slipping against um, the Texas Tech game. I, I could see it slipping and then, uh, then we just got steamrolled uh, on, that, on that Saturday. But it felt great to go back and <clears throat> work on our fundamentals, get, get back to doing the things that's made us a, a good defensive team. Uh, then get some guys healthy. You know, Jaywan Roberts wasn't really able to play in the Iowa State game. Ramon Walker was out. He wasn't able to play. Uh, so having those bodies back tonight I thought was good. Um, and I thought our kids were sharp uh, the first half. Uh, our defense was, was really good. I watched, we watched f f uh, film on uh, Longwood, um, you know, winning their tournament. Especially beating High Point at High Point's not easy, um, so we had a lot of respect for them, and and we played accordingly. But uh, you know, it's the NCAA tournament, you don't take anything for granted. Um, our kids came in with the right attitude. Our best players approached it the right way, and our team followed. We'll start with questions for student athletes, uh, beginning to our right. Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston uh, for both Jamal and LJ. Uh, this was a five-point game at the, in the first half, and then you guys ripped off, a, I think, a 20-4 to four run. From your perspectives, um, what fueled, fueled that run? 
Um, our defense, um, we started getting stops and we're able to get run outs and easier baskets. And uh, we forced a lot of turnovers. Um, we got a lot of good shots in that run. And uh, we, played, we played to our culture during that whole stretch. So I, I think mostly our defense uh, fueled it. LJ? Uh, I mean, I would say the same thing. Uh, we just let our defense lead to offense instead of just worrying about um, offense. We, we locked down and forced turnovers, and that led out to easy, easier buckets. We'll go straight in front of you. So once again, that was head coach Calvin Sampson, LJ Cryer, and Jamal Shedd. They credit the defense specifically with LJ Cryer and, and Jamal Shedd um, gave towards the tail end of the clip. And then Calvin Sampson, once again, reiterating the, the how we're kind of running out of gas in the Big 12 tournament. Interesting. He said he, he noticed it during the Texas Tech game. And then it just really was really evident in the Iowa State game. So again, kind of reiterating what he said to the uh, broadcast, the television broadcast after the game about health priority after the Big 12 tournament. Slippage in Iowa State. I mean, Coach said it Sunday that Iowa State was 10 deep and they're built for three games, three days. Cougs at that time played, what, what seven and a half players at that point were not built for three games, three days. So no taking away from Iowa State's performance. They rolled the Cougs. One by 28. But it didn't change the fact that Houston was a number one seed and already locked that up. Some fans blew it out of proportion. Some fans and media blew it out of proportion. National media blew it out of proportion. Uh, in particular, there were some comments about Houston potentially having, well, obviously not, not realistic, but they were saying that loss could be, well, a lot of people were having them be prime candidates for upsets because of how they looked against Iowa State in the Big 12 championship game. You know, that's why they have, I mean, they need, they need to beat the Aggies because those same media folks will say, see, we told you they were a fraud. We told you that game against Iowa State took a lot, a lot of out of them. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever. Next. Yeah, one of the things I took away from Coach Sampson said when he talked about his best players and their approach to the game and how the team followed. And, and that's what I saw. Uh, like I saw later with Jamal and LJ, the supreme focus going into the game and how they started the game and pretty much how they allowed their defense turn the offense. So I think that's going to be um, kind of like the story or a story for success um, against Texas Tech with those two guards leading the way with, um, with their preparation and how they – attack the game and be ready to come into the game against Texas A&M. And part of that, I see, you know, EI Crab as well. Folks, not enough people realize how good Iowa State is. You know, I mean, one of the comments I heard from national folks was, I was shocked at what Iowa State did to Houston. Why? Cougs did not shoot well. Iowa State did. They were playing a home game, basically. Okay. And next? And for most of the season, Iowa State was right up there with Houston at the top of the Big 12. And is one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I hear those type of people say things, I always take it with a grain of salt because I, I know that they haven't watched or followed Houston in detail like we have or the Big 12, for that matter, like we have. And so they're only reacting to the game itself versus taking the entire season or the past few months in, um, into consideration. So I never really put much stock into it because I, I know some of the things that they say goes a part of ratings. They're looking to get a, a, a good sound bite to, to get clicks or to get um, or more watchers for whatever show or network that they're on. And Mike's post right there is good. Iowa State is good enough mm -hmm. to make the Final Four instead of UConn. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah. I hope they both meet in the Elite Eight because that, that would be one heck of a game. Both Agreed. Meet. It comes down to matchups. Teams, you hope they play well each game against their opponent. 
and that third opponent does not have a player just as a flamethrower get hot and just start knocking down 10 threes in a game. Hello, Kentucky. Oh, goodbye, Kentucky. Um, this is the fun of March. Because what if Sunday, Emmanuel Sharp knocks down eight threes? And all our hype about, we expect in the Aggies-Houston game to be competitive and tight. Emmanuel Sharp and LJ Cryer say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're going to knock down the final 15 threes. This game's over with 10 minutes going in the second half. You know, who knows? But it's the competition that we like and that we enjoy, and we want to see competitive basketball. I think this game is going to be competitive on all levels, from the coaches to the players. Yep. For sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. There's not a – it's a respect between the Aggies. I'm not afraid of the Aggies. Cougars not afraid of the Aggies. None of none of that stuff. Could the Cougs lose Sunday? Yeah. If they don't play their A game, their B plus game, and the Aggies do, or and Wade Taylor and Obaseki both go off, sure. But Jamal Shed, I trust in Dayon. Dayon said it. How long ago was it? Five weeks ago, when you said Jamal Shed, you put it out there in the universe about Jamal Shed going to carry this team. Jamal Shed will find a way. And that's what I'm I'm basing on that. Simple as that. He'll find a way to win. You know what? You know what I'm thinking of these what will be two games played against AM this season. When with the respect the coaches have for one another, I could see them both agreeing to do a home and home going forward for maybe next year or a couple of years down the line and kind of uh, building that building a a rivalry between a and m and houston i can see that i would have a problem with it uh with the coups going to 20 games excuse me the big 12 going to 20 conference games i don't know might kind of keep it light in non-conference unfortunately you know light to light for me you know my personal opinion but you know who knows we'll see well, as we start to wind things down, I want to ask you guys if you caught this on the TV broadcast, speaking of national media, but when they were talking about JoJo Tugler, I, I, my ears perked up when they they called him Houston's best big man already. And Kelvin Sampson, when they interviewed him, I think it was right after one of the media timeouts in the first half, you kind of mentioned how JoJo Tugler is, I don't know if it was a, for a slip up by by Samson, but he called him a starter. He called him a starter, and then the TV broadcast went on to mention how he's their best big man of the season, obviously now out for the year. He has potential to be the best big man, but he's not right now. <laughs> no, he no, he had too many up and down moments this this season. No, but I agree. But I, I just found it interesting when they ran with it, especially when it comes to NBA potential. He has the most upside, but no. No, Mm-mm. no. First, with Coach Sam, I don't think he slipped up there. I think he was saying um, JoJo's talent in regards to where he is. He's a starter, and and often you hear coaches say we have six starters, and mm-hmm. therefore he was counted on so much. He was the the role that he had. He was consistent. I, almost you consider him like a, a starter. So I, I think that's kind of what he meant there. And um, like Chris just alluded to with JoJo having the highest ceiling grading to the NBA, I think when people are speaking about him, they're taking that into consideration. And that's why one would say that he's the best big man, because if you watch him and you project where he will be next year and a few years down the line, you one would say that he's the best big man. And, and I can understand that and I would get behind that. But like also like Chris is saying right now in college basketball for this team, he isn't the best big man. But I mean, I this depends on the context of what they're saying and, and how you are taking it. But I, I can see it either way for sure. Well, that's pretty much gonna do it for to the tonight's, I guess now today in the morning, the episode of Let's Rage Cougs as we cross midnight here in the central time zone is officially Saturday, March twenty third, as we're 
recording this live. Once again, we'd like to thank each and every single one of you guys that has tuned in with us past for hashtag Let's Rage Cougs after dark following Houston's 86-46 to victory over Longwood in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Once again, the Cougars will be playing nine seed D9 C Texas A&M on Sunday and uh, barring it being announced somewhere that the time for that game is still to be announced. So I'm sure it'll be uh, brought up mentioned sooner rather than later. It'll be a rematch from the December matchup that these two programs had when it comes to this game against Longwood. It was a thorough, a thoroughly dominating performance by the Cougars. LJ Choir had 17 points. Damian Dunn encouraging 17 points. He himself was efficient as well. Five of 10 shooting two for five on threes and got to the free throw line uh, multiple times was five of six from the charity stripe in 22 minutes. Uh, and to bring up a comment earlier that I saw and we didn't bring up, it was EI Crabtree as well. Ryan Ovid at the end of the crowd at the end was an awesome sight um, for him. So everyone that played had their moments um today and uh, i get yeah I crap these points I, I, I guess as well he says that longwood was the best rated 16 seed there was still 16 seed and houston took care of this and they did what they were supposed to um with that being said I'd like to say thank you once again to steve saxinian mike and jennifer Pittman with star pizza and bb's for being sponsored of today's show we also like to say thank you to vincent harding for being a sponsor of the ticker on the bottom of the screen, we'll be back Sunday whenever the time is announced shortly after the conclusion of whatever happens between Houston and Texas A&M. And, and Chris, I'll toss it over to you. Any final thoughts on this game looking ahead at Sunday or anything else you'd like to talk about? I'll say this. These these late starts, they're tough, man. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if uh, the Aggie Cougar game on Sunday will start at 8 o'clock or or six or whatever, because yeah, these these starts are late. So thank you to the fans for staying up with <laughs> us on this edition of Less Rage Cougs. We always appreciate your support and, and your comments and your questions. And join us Sunday night. Looking forward to the matchup between the Cougs and the Aggies. The players, the coaches, the rival. We we don't like the Aggies. The Aggies don't like Cougs and how they think of us and whatever. But looking forward to it. But as always, thank you and follow me on the Houston Round Bar Review platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Spoutable. And for the time being, still on, on Musk, Twitter at VHR Review. Hopefully have up some locker room comments. I don't know if I'm going to post them tonight or in a few hours in the morning. But as always, always remember this. Since 1994, the Houston Round Ball Review, local name, global perspective. Yeah, Chris, hoping for a 4 p.m., 3 p.m. tip-off on Sunday, hopefully. Yeah, man, I, I was struggling that second half to stay awake. Luckily, I was ready to rage about them cooks. But, um, oh, we like Chris just said, we appreciate everyone who stayed up late with us to join the show, whether you commented or you just watched. And you've been watching for however many. We definitely appreciate it. Appreciate all of our sponsors to help continue us help for us to sponsor the show, continue going. And I'm excited, I mean, about this next matchup. I mean, I think it's going to be a battle of the guards. I think Houston has um, a will to win and have a determination and a toughness about it that, that is going to propel them to victory. You can follow me on all social media platforms at Dayon Dunlap. I'm looking forward to Sunday. As always, go Cougs.